I'm going to transform this 40-year-old trimaran that I bought for $50,000. And I believe it will be worth over $300,000 when I'm finished. My goal is to complete the build on a shoestring budget all within 12 months. Think I can do it? But first, I need to sell the idea to my fiance as we currently live on it. Lucky for me, she loves warm weather, pina coladas, and once I mention Mexico, she's in. Well, that went better than I had expected. So now it's game on. First step, I need to find lightweight aerospace composites as I refuse to use any wood on this build. And these are not usually easy to find, nor are they cheap. But after a very thorough search on Craigslist, I found the needle in the haystack. Let's just say this is a huge undertaking. Getting all the paints, epoxy, fiberglass, and these gigantic 19 foot by six and a half foot wide panels and other composites all put together and building a custom trailer to carry all this for the 800 mile journey down to Mexico. But that's still not the hard part. The trailer will be driven down only after I make it back alive from sailing my trimaran 2,000 miles to the least expensive boatyard in Mexico. As I'm saying this out loud, I'm thinking to myself, who would do this, right? Anyway, um, this is it. Gonna hit the road in a few minutes. Marissa's coming along. She decided to come, right? <laughs> no? I'm coming. I'm writing my test. I'm doing my citizenship and then I'm coming. When? As soon as I can. Get my passport. I can't wait. Anyway, it's time to get on the road. Heading to Wymus. Coconuts in there. Hey, there she is. What are you doing, Curly? What are you doing, Curly? You like road trips, don't you? Hey, guys. Well, I made it back down to Wymus, and uh, it's now time to start this project I've been planning months for. And I just drove down 16-hour drive from Los Angeles down to Wymus. That's where the boat is hauled out. I plan to update everything. I want to make it as modern and as cool and as lightweight. Wherever I can find weight to cut out, which I've got plenty of ideas, I will. Anyway, there's many, many things I plan to improve along the way. And of course, I will keep you up to date with every step of this project. But as of right now, here it is. All right, guys, so we did our first cut. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's right here and it fits the curve of the boat really nicely. So I know that it's, it's a little windy out here, so I'm hoping it doesn't mess up with our sound, but I'm gonna try it anyway. This is the first day of construction. The last four days I've been getting stuff off the boat, making room for the time when we tear apart the amas and we tear apart the main cabin. There won't be much inside, so I'm hoping we're good to go. Anyway, so we made the first piece and maybe I'm good or maybe just lucky. I got a really good curve just by eyeballing it. So basically we have the 15 foot piece that we just cut off with our curve. And as you can see, it's not perfect, but it was done by a jigsaw, but it's decent. But this is the only 15 foot measuring tool I have right now. So we're gonna use this. So what I did, I have, I have 24 by 36 inch laminated quarter inch total glass. So it's eighth inch on each side laminated, which is stronger than tempered lamp from what the glass guy tells me. So we have those pieces. I'm gonna take one out right now. We're gonna lay it out and give you the idea of what we're doing here. So here's the glass that we're using. And as you can see, I, I have 11 pieces of glass. And uh, this one in particular was on the bottom and it cracked. So I'm gonna use this one as the example piece only because I don't wanna crack another one. So as you can see, all those busy making the cut uh, to our windows. And uh, we have a little bit of a hard stick here. They're doing double work. And that's because our blades don't go down two and a half inches. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to do it, flip it over and cut the bottom side as well, which is a nightmare. I've tried to borrow a saw. And by borrowing a saw, I couldn't even get the right depth. Rarely do people have circular saws that go more than two and almost three eighths. I mean, that's kind of it. All right, guys, well, we're making progress. Hey, guys, well, it's been a long day. I got an invite to a luau in the boatyard here. Uh, there's a roasting pig 
I'm kind of a vegan, so I'm not sure if that's my thing, but it's a good social deal. So anyway, here's the project. I just pretty much got it all uh, thickened, epoxied up, ready for glass after we do a light sanding. So it's kind of set to go. And now it's a matter of uh, tomorrow glassing, and then we're on to the next section to support the roof. And uh, yeah, and right now I'm locking my vehicle. Not that I need to here, but it's pretty good. Anyway, so I'm going across the yard to some friends uh, and see what kind of an event they have. Anyway, we're gonna walk all the way across and uh, check her out. Anyway, so we've gotta go to the far end of the yard here. So this is, this is uh, Marina Wymus. It's right next to San Carlos, about 12 miles away by driving. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a dirt yard, but it's, it's a good yard. I mean, you can do pretty much anything you want, hence my project. So that's a, a big deal. And I sailed from Los Angeles, as you might already know, and it took me about 18 days I sailed down to Cabo, then around and up to Sea Cortez on the Baja side and then sailed across, which my earlier videos will show. And uh, that's really to get here because of, man, the cost. In LA, it's about $125 an hour for yard labor. I mean, that's what the yard charges and they, and they make it mandated. You cannot bring in your own labor. You have to use theirs, of course, for insurance reasons or whatever. So it's pretty ridiculous. And down here, I've got a skilled guy, Aldo, and he's, I'm paying him twice as much as I would normally pay a guy down here and other projects I've had, but it's a thousand pesos a day. And if you know the conversion, that's barely over $6 an hour for a really good guy who I can let run with a project and not have to hover over him, which I'm kind of used to doing down here. So spend a few extra dollars and we've got a really good, uh, good guy to work with so I'm pretty fortunate to be able to do it down here it took some time and effort to get everything lined up as my earlier video show but overall I'm stoked to be here the weather is great today it was extremely warm uh, about 84 degrees we were kind of sweating bullets even in the shade so I'm glad we weren't on deck we were in the shade next to a big boat that gives us a nice cover for most of the day which is great Anyway, so we're walking to the end of the yard here and uh, Dale is throwing a potluck. I'm bringing eight IPAs from Costco. They have a really nice IPA. It has like a citrus flavor to it. And uh, there's the crew that happens to be a part of this deal. So I'm walking to this little gathering and uh, yeah, we're gonna see what it's like here. I've never been to one of these to be honest with you. Hey guys, say hi to the people on YouTube. Yeah, I got my guitar. I can't say hi. This is part of the crew. All the lifeboaters in this yard, they're all they all seem to congregate every year about this time and they go sailing for a few months. Oh yeah, beautiful. That's nice. Downsize. 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 That's the right thing to do, man. Yeah, so it's a pretty good turnout, it looks like, man. Yeah, it's a pretty good little scene. Honestly, I've never been here and I've heard a lot about the barbecues, like but uh, so far it looks like a good little deal. And there's the, there's the pig on the spit. There's my South African friend Craig. Known this guy for years. <laughs> Craig, how you doing, buddy? Say hi to everyone on YouTube. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Look at this. Joe's on the pig, and there's Dale. The guy in the gray shirt right here is Dale. He's the coordinator. And here's one of his boats. Dale's got a few boats around here. Some in the water, some on land. He's kind of a lifer in this yard. There's some people that really enjoy this lifestyle down here at Marina Wymus. It's kind of a cool scene. Anyway, adios for now. We'll update you later.
Hey guys. Well, yesterday, been this puppy um, coming into the restaurant and he's she just has so much personality. I thought it was a he at first and I gave him a little bit of food over the last five days I've been there or five times. I, uh, so I called my fiance and I said, what do you think? I put her on FaceTime and she saw her in the video and she's like, yep, that's it. So right now it hasn't even been 24 hours and this is lucky. Her uh, six brothers and sisters all died by cars going by. They, they live right there on the street. But this is Lucky, the Mexican doggy. I took her to the vet and uh, he definitely has worms and all that stuff. And right now we've just been bonding in the last half hour or so. She now is enjoying herself. She's got a toy, she has food, she's chewing on my finger. Prior to that, didn't know really who I was and very, very standoffish, even though she's a happy puppy. She's just like, who is this guy? Why is he, why is he taking care of me and trying to be nice? So right now the trust is building. Anyway, so here's where we are today. We have got stuff all over the deck. And the most time consuming thing I'm finding right now is trying to work around what, what I have on the boat. I've got a storage bin over there, part of the yard, that's actually a full roll up. It's pretty nice. It's like a 10 by 10, maybe almost eight feet tall. And uh, I've got a lot of stuff there right now. The two amas I've already cleared. And then what we're gonna do, our plan basically is we're gonna make all three supports, which will be the one behind the mast, which is what Aldo's currently working on the windows. And that'll be right there. And then uh, the two I just showed you on the trailer end up going right down here, uh, go up. I've cut them such that I can mount them and it's probably fine. They're gonna have the angle cut to the shape of the current pilot house. So I can actually install them and not tear away the pilot house until we're absolutely ready, put on the roof and then we can cut it away. So to prevent any rain, which as you see, it's not the most uh, ideal uh, climate. So then the third, the third section that I'm about to build right now is gonna go on the next bulkhead. And right here behind the arch I made as I first bought the boat is gonna come down today. I can maybe use it for something, I'm not really sure at the moment. Just enough gap there, just enough gap there, just enough gap. So we do the caulking, we should be totally flush and we're good to go. Great job, Alden. And now today my job is to find a way to cut this without removing it entirely and be able to lay the piece and I've gotta work on the inside here. So we pretty much have to remove a lot of stuff in here. And you've got to love my uh, pajamas here. So this stuff's all going. And this is my aft cabin, which is pretty messy right now. But end of the day is I need to clear everything out of here. We've been clearing stuff again and again. And there's my little rat trap. Uh, man, I had the worst experience with a rat on my boat back in Marina Del Rey for over three weeks. Could not catch it. And at one point I was off the boat for two weeks wire damage, major clothing, a few wetsuits got damaged, like all kinds of crap. My panel will, will be attaching to this bulkhead here, which is extremely solid. And then also behind here, there's another attachment point. So I've got to remove my, my supports for the traveler, which I've already taken the traveler down. Everything here basically is going um, up to about here. And this guy, we're gonna come maybe about to here because I will build cabinetry below it. I wanna keep as much of the helm section intact. I, I don't wanna rewire everything. So I'm gonna pretty much have it to where it will stay virtually where it is now. But when you sit here, you're gonna have a much more open area and a higher ceiling as well. My pet mosquito, this guy, he keeps me company at night. And I must say, I'm not a fan, but uh, they live with me and I try to remove them as often as possible. Unfortunately, this guy might have to get removed right now. Oh, there he is. It's still going. See, they're pretty quick too. Anyway, hopefully you don't have any mosquito lovers out there that are really mad at me that I tried to kill a mosquito, but I'm tired of itching. Between 4 p.m. all the way till about 9 in the morning, mosquitoes. So these chain plates are becoming a real pain in the butt. They're very, very difficult to take out. I've been trying on the outside, I've cut it free. So I guess the only real option now is to cut straight down behind it 
and then I can pry it outward because I've cut everything off of around it. Now it's the bottom is very, very hard to get. It. There's a lot of caulking down there. As you can see, there's a ton. Guys, watch how fast my puppy eats her food. Hey, are you already looking at me? You see where I'm at? Are you ready? Are you ready for the food? Are you ready for it? Give it a shot. Oh my goodness, you're a fast eater. So Aldo's building a new transom. It looks like a pyramid. Anyway, so Aldo has been busy. I put him on the transom. We're trying to make this blunt. I want to have it totally flat on the back here, up to the first step. Hey guys, um, I've been kind of out of commission for the last three days. Mexico, El Matador, Salvador, Tequila, El Contole, eh?